a class, uh, Professor Nixensky at uh, UNC Charlotte, and uh, this is a brief demo for week four of uh, Digital Fundamentals, and uh, this is um, sort of this demo is to help you out with project one, and it's a uh, it's it's a way to kind of combine images with uh, with some vector lines that you have to uh, create some of those hybrid compositions that we looked at uh, in the slides today. And uh, what I have right here are some lines that came in from our AutoCAD file, and uh, they're just lines. And you can even see if we zoom in, you know, they're not even joined together. Uh, in fact, if I turn down the line weights, you can probably see it a little bit better. But they um, I got some problems here. Like we're not, we uh, from from the very beginning, they're not really closed shapes. Like if I select these and and I and I have a fill, they don't they don't fill in. So um, they're not going to be useful for us because they're not closed paths. They're not going to be useful for us to um, to be able to get uh, to use them as uh, selection paths. So uh, I'm going to show you a hack, and this is on the remedial. Uh, Illustrator video, but I think it's useful to show you here in context. So again, I have these lines that came in from a file, uh, from an iCAD file, and I've turned a lot of things uh, off. These are just a few of them, but um, I'm just doing this to show them visually. So here they are. Um, I'm going to select them all, and I'm going to go to the Live Paint tool. So I'm going to go in and uh, go into the um, yeah, live live paint. So if I if I have the shade builder, I hold down the button to go to live paint. And the live paint, I have a fill and a stroke. That's fine. Click to make it a group. And then you can see if I if I if it's an enclosed space, like if it's defined by uh, if it looks enclosed to the computer, it turns red. And I click, and it's just like a coloring book. And I go in, I can flood fill all these shapes, like very well, like undo that one <laughs> there. Um very quickly. And then I'm done. It's fine. Uh, I go to layers and you can see if I, if I look at this, it's all, all it's all a big, uh, uh, live paint group. Okay. So if I go in, I can expand the group and then I can, uh, you know, ungroup it. And then inside the group, there's one layer. There's one group that has just the lines and there's one group that has the, um, the, the, uh, shape. I'm going to go ahead and, and, and erase that line group. And so now I'm just left with that clean, look at that, like a nice clean thing. And if I wanted to apply a stroke to it, just to show you, um, let's get a black stroke going here. Really cleans it up. Like it's not, not jagged anymore. The edges are um, completely enclosed. Okay, so that's a quick way to quickly, instead of like joining the lines together or using the pen tool or like whatever, just let Live Paint uh, do your job for you. Just smooth out those corners there. See, with a nice rounded corner, uh, that takes care of some of that. So there's a few little things that are maybe not perfect, like the way that it did this circle here because of the way it came in from AutoCAD. Sometimes you can't help that. Um, but the idea is, I have a bunch of these shapes now that are completely uh, enclosed. Now right now they're a group. I'm gonna go ahead and ungroup these and ungroup them again. You can see them. now they're all paths. Okay. So they're I can pull them around and stuff. So they're all paths. Let's go ahead and turn that layer off. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna place, so I can go to file, place, and I have a texture I downloaded off Google. And I've got this like concrete and I can kind of scale it. It's got this nice concrete color. And um, just to, just for the demo here, I'm gonna draw a, uh, a shape. So I have a square, let's draw a shape here. Okay, and if you select, if you have a shape that's above a picture. So if I go in, I have my image in my path that I drew. If you, that shape's above it. And by mean above it, I mean it's above it in the layer, and you can see it if I if I send it to the back. So I right click and say arrange, send to back. Now it's not. Now it, now the image is above it. I want the path above the image, so I can I can actually drag that above too. Okay. So if I do that, I select both of them, and I right click, 
I can say Mick Clipping Mask. And that, what that does is it actually clips out. It actually, it kind of creates a portal through which we can see that underlying image. And uh, it's a group. The group is the mask and the image. And if I click on it, you can see it actually selects the whole thing. I can go into the clipping uh, path and I can choose that. And um, I, can, um, I can move the clipping path around. I can go into the uh, direct selection and I can choose the anchor points and I can edit those anchor points and that's actually going to uh, move the mask. And you can see what happens if I go off the... So there's a limit to that image. You can see actually if I mouse over, the, the red rectangle uh, on the inside is the actual bounds of the image. If I select the image, I can actually move the image too and it'll be you know within that uh, and then the, the path. So the path and the image like work together. Okay. If you want to, um, when you've got those selected, you know you have the uh, thing selected. You can you can undo it. You can you can remove the whole thing. You can just go right click, release clipping mask, and now it pops back, and I'm left with my path, which is now has no fill and no stroke, but it exists. It just doesn't have. <coughs> excuse me, doesn't have a fill uh, or a stroke. So you can always add those back though. And in fact, you know, what's to stop you from releasing the mask and editing the, uh, the shape and then going back, selecting them, and then say make clipping mask. And that, that achieves a, a kind of a similar effect without having to go through the, uh, the layers too, in, in too much of a complex manner. So, so that's actually how we can punch out like shapes uh, using the paths we have in Illustrator uh, in order to, um, to help us with these complex layouts. And then, you know, this just becomes another like tool that we can use um, when, we, when, we're, when we're adding things uh, in our complex compositions here. So you can see that, you know, the shape is actually behind. So it actually really, it actually removed, it's, it's as if we took a pair of scissors and, and that was our kind of stencil and we stenciled out that image, okay? So you can, that's a, that's a fun thing to play with. Let's go back to our original uh, thing. Let's look at a clipping mask with a more complex. In fact, it's not a shape, it's a bunch of shapes. Okay, so same thing. I'm actually gonna go ahead and get that concrete uh, piece back. I'm gonna release my mask. I'm gonna wipe out that um, shape and I'm gonna bring this in These are on different layers, but I hope it still works here. So then bring it in. And the procedure is a little bit different. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually, I'm going to grab all these first and make them in, and uh, I'm actually going to um, go to object, um, compound path, make. So now if I look at these, They're all um, a compound path. And what a compound path is, it's just, it's a path that can have, like you can have a path inside of another path so that you can knock out part of it. You can have two objects and, and uh, you want them to be red. It's not the same as a group. Um, they really are considered like the same object, not like a basket of objects. So you make them into a compound path. Then if you turn on your uh, texture, your image, you can select them both and you can say make clipping mask, and that will actually create a complex clipping mask, okay? You can't do that unless you make them into a compound path. I will, I will, I will prove it to you. So if I go in and I select everything and I say make clipping mask, see only like the top object becomes a clipping path and the rest of them are just paths that are just contained in that group pretty unimpressive that doesn't really work so release the mask um let's hide this image here now most of the time you can right click 
and you can just say uh, um, make compound path. But there's actually a compound path in here, which is that there is a shape and it has a, a hole punched in it. So that's kind of messing it up. But um, like I showed you though, you can force that by selecting everything and then you say object uh, compound path make. Then when you add this object, you can go in to, uh, well, you can right click and say make clipping mask. You can also go in uh, to object clipping mask make. And once you've got it, you know, you can move the whole kit and caboodle around. You can scale it, you can do things like that. It's considered an object. Okay. So that, I hope that like uh, helps. I hope that, that sort of shows you, we see a lot of this technique when we are looking at some other, um, we, we've seen some of the examples. Uh, so that, that's one thing that you can begin to do. You can begin to layer things. You know, another, another thing that's, um, It didn't talk about, but is very useful. When you when you are laying these things in, you know, don't forget that you um pay attention to the layer order of things. Um, you can also go in, and if you if you choose this uh, path, you could you could go in and uh, play with the opacity of it. So that those things will show through. I actually don't care for that so much because it actually creates this kind of, um, you can kind of see this. So you might want that effect, but if you want that line to kind of show through, uh, or if you, if you just want that to be um, a darker effect, you can change the type, the go to opacity, so I clicked opacity. You can change the type to multiply or something, and that's actually going to create. So that actually lessens it. It lightens us up, but without lighting up the line. So multiply is your friend. Okay, and that, that can create some interesting effects. Once you begin layering vector, laying in vector assets, you know, and this then this works too if you have multiple. Um, you know, if you had multiple. Uh, objects that you uh, textures or images and lay on each other. So you can achieve the, the kinds of effects that you have in Photoshop actually in Illustrator for the most part. And you know, again, that's just changing. So see the difference between the multiply type and the normal type. So experiment with that. And just look at how that black like goes all the way through. It's really nice. So just, you know, look, look at those layer styles, you know, be sure, you know, to, to make use of, of, uh, of a line, line weights when you lay these in. Um, but hopefully this technique uh, is useful. If you have any questions about it, uh, let me know. But uh, try to experiment with this. I think almost everybody has uh, a use for it. I think another particular use besides the plan that's obvious is uh, for using it in those sections. Right, that might be a way to get some interesting uh, uh, texture in those sections. I think if you look at the examples that I gave you in the slideshow, there's there's all kinds of uh, ways of using this technique. So, I'll see you in class. Uh, good luck.